What is up, folks? It is Matt Freed, and it is episode two of Sleeping In with Matt Freed. I am here, I am there, I am everywhere. I've been listening to way too many Beatles this week. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for stopping by to check out episode two of Sleeping In with Matt Freed. We've worked out a couple of the kinks from the first week, and we're coming back even stronger. This week, we have the one, the only, the uncomparable Mr. Reggie Watts climbing into bed to talk a little bit about his banner success that he's been having in 2010. Reggie Watts, for the extremely uninformed, was handpicked by Conan O'Brien this year to be the opener on his 2010 Legally Prohibited from Being Funny on Television Tour. Trying to remember that one? Bit of a mouthful. Also, Reggie Watts just recently finished producing his own pilot, The Comedy Central, and as recent as last week, he was named to Rolling Stone's 2010 Hot List. Very hot commodity, Mr. Reggie Watts, in the house right now. So anyway, folks, without any further ado, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to show you the interview. So, ladies and gentlemen, my episode with Reggie Watts, one of the best ones I've ever had. Enjoy. Sitting next to me, possibly one of the most interesting, innovative performers of our time. You've seen him all over the place. You've seen him at Edinburgh Fringe. You've seen him on Comedy Central. You've seen him doing the music for Louis on FX. A performer, a writer, a musician, a dreamer. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Reggie Watts. Hi. Uh, you got you got a little lost trying to get to the studio, didn't you? I did. Yes, I did. Well, the first there was, uh, well, there was a problem with the calendar, and oh. that was the that was the first thing. And then my brunch went a little bit too late, and then I started walking in the wrong direction because I didn't use the compass function on my phone. Oh, yeah, there you go. But then eventually I found it, yeah. and I came here, and here I am. Were you brunching with a lady? I was brunching with a lady. Oh my, oh, Reggie, you're <laughs> such a dandy. Well, I like to take risks. <laughs> <laughs> Things. Remember all the details, baby got excited when I was ignited by love. She knew that everything was falling. Somebody tell me the secret of all, all, all. Oh, yes, it's so easy for you to tell me what went wrong, what went right, what went wrong, what went right. But in the distance, there's a future I think you see. Come on. Musician uh, yeah. in Seattle. Was music always your first? Was it your first passion? Your first love? Uh, let me see. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I know. I was always into music. I was mm -hmm. always into music. When I was a little kid, I, I really loved Elvis Presley and um, Ray Charles. Were my like mm -hmm. two biggest icons when I was a kid. Which is very odd, but um, and I got like his records, and I got. Uh, Elvis's records, and I got Ray Charles records. My dad had, would have lots of jazz and stuff, but Ray Charles was a guy I kind of identified with on piano, and so they got me piano lessons and started piano lessons when I was five, and violin in the school system, and I was in the choirs and stuff. So I was very active in the music, public school music, and private lessons. Wow. And I just love music. And then, how did comedy come into play with all of this? I just was always, I just always thought things were stupid. <laughs> You know, like, like, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's the, the ultimate compliment in comedy, isn't it? You know, like, they're just like, that's so stupid. It's, but, um, it's just absurd, the absurdity right. of everything, right. you know, and like, how can you take things so seriously? And, uh, but, but just like a class clown, like typical class right. clown, kind of disruptive, because I'm always like seeing a different angle. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, what have you been doing? And he's just like, I'm trying to work. <laughs> 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 Oh, 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 oh,
that they're improvised. They're completely improvised from beginning to end, aren't they? That's yeah, fairly much so. I mean, there are some bits that I will repeat, but uh, for the most part, mostly improvised. Ninety-two percent. So when your act is evolving, when you're making when you're making changes to it, like how do you track that? How do you stay on top of that, if at all? Um, I don't. I mean, essentially, I have a, a, a bunch of floating concepts that are out there, you mm -hmm. know, like kind of things that have worked before. And then I just kind of have a way of uh, kind of bullshitting. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like I get on stage and I just start talking in a way that seems familiar to something you've heard before. Mm -hmm. And then I'll oftentimes just stop and, and then switch to something else. Mm -hmm. But another way of something that you've heard before. And there are like little jokes that kind of happen, but it's more like it's being revealed a few milliseconds in the future right. for me, you know? So yeah. like what you're getting is like, like for me, like maybe five milliseconds in the past. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so it's kind of like... It must have been a huge thrill to, you know, be doing to be doing that kind of stuff and, and be building on it. And then all of a sudden you get a phone call from, of all people, Conan O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that was really weird. That was like, uh, it happened so fast. Mm -hmm. It was like... Heard Conan's going on tour. Oh, really? That's interesting. Doing stuff five days later. My manager. Uh, Conan's interested in having you uh, open the tour. Really? <laughs> I doubt that. Next day. They want you to be on the tour. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess we better cancel that Australian tour. <laughs> but let me think about it for a while. Okay, I should do it. <laughs> Call up all my friends. Hey, you know, I should, I've, have to cancel this other tour, should I do the Conan tour? And he's just like, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> like, 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 like they're, they're all like, like just yelling at me. And I'm like, okay, I get it, I get it, I'll do it. For us on tour, so Reggie, if you please. Thank you very much. Inside that big ass purse. <laughs> Let me take a guess. Is there another purse inside that big ass purse? Maybe there's another purse inside of the other purse. In case you forget what it looks like. You've got so you hadn't, you hadn't ever worked or, or met Conan prior to doing the uh, Conan tour that went through the country earlier this year. I, I've grazed his presence once backstage at Radio City Music Hall when they had this, uh, I think it was a benefit for autism. Or it was called A Night of Too Many Stars. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I played the voice of um, Sarah Silverman's ass. Okay. Um, but I only played the talking part. The singing part oh. was done by, by Schmeigel. Really? Yeah. Wow. But the, the interesting thing about that it's like I met you know met him there and then later on uh, I think it was in New York again and he goes he goes that's so funny he remembered me and he's like I'm so sorry I like you know I saw you know we was, it was so quick and blah 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 he's like I really liked what you did you know so it was like this weird like full circle thing so it was probably a good thing that I did that I mean mm -hmm. it was a lesson that like even if it's a small thing that doesn't necessarily make any sense the right. fact that you're involved in something is is a is a great thing. It's a, that's like it's kind of like a classic show business story right there. Yeah. Too. Now yeah. Uh, to to wrap up, and yeah. I don't mean to put you on the spot because I know we don't have any of your equipment here, but mm -hmm. is it possible that we could get like an exclusive like unplugged performance? For I think a I think there was a um, I might have a, let's see if I saved it. It'd be really cool if I did. <laughs>
Thank you so much for uh, being a part of the Sleeping In with Matt Free podcast. No problem. Well, folks, that just about does it for episode two of Sleeping In with Matt Free. You know the old saying if it's Sunday, it's Sleeping In with Matt Free. I want to give a very special thanks to Reggie himself. Thank you so much for making himself available to do the podcast. Very special thanks to my producers on this episode Caitlin Brodnick and Sarah Wilson, as well as my staff, Mr. Roman Reimer. You can check us out at www.sleepinpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter on at sleepinpodcast.com. We are now finally available on iTunes for download. So if you can only catch maybe like five minutes of this thing, but you want to put it on your iPhone and get on the subway and watch the rest, you can totally do it. Although it did just occur to me just now. Why would you want to watch this episode again if this is at the end? You know what? Flawed logic. I'm just going to throw it right out. Anyway, folks, it's there. So just go and check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Matt Free. Thank you so much for stopping by, for checking out our podcast, for checking out this little thing that we're creating right here in my home in Brooklyn, New York. And folks, one last time, thank you very much. I'm flattered, but I've already stolen your idea for a spec script. I'm Matt Free. Thanks.